السلام عليكم ورحمة الله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين uh, إن شاء الله we'll continue with uh, كتاب أصول السنة the book of أصول السنة by إمام أحمد رحمه الله and we're almost done with the book that uh, includes uh, the عقيده of the people of أهل السنة uh, some of the specific matters that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protected Ahlul Sunnah uh, by following the way of the Prophet in these matters of belief that uh, deviant ones uh, they deviated away from the true path when they differed in these matters of belief and as repeated many times before these books of Aqidah is not dealing with the uh, the foundation of the Aqidah, the six pillars of Al-Iman in details, but rather it focuses on uh, the things that the Ummah split in, split it in, and the truth about these matters. And it's something that guidance after guidance, a person needs to be guided from disbelief and shirk to be among uh, the people of Al-Islam. And within the deen of Islam, a person needs to be guided to the saved sect. And it doesn't mean that everyone else will be in hell fire forever and this and that. Of course not. But there's always right and wrong. And there are levels of wrong. And if someone that you can pray behind, even if there is deviation, but they're still within the fold of Islam, that's definitely one of them is better than the whole earth full of disbelievers. So things has to be put in the right perspective. Uh, but to protect one's uh, belief and aqidah is such a, an important thing from any deviation. Uh, we reached the statement after the uh, what's mentioned about the nifaq or hypocrisy. Uh, then Imam Ahmad rahimahullah, he says afterwards, he says, وَقَوْلُهُ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمْ لَا تَرْجِعُوا بَعْدِي كُفَّارًا ضُلَّالًا if you have the book with you, this is what is best. And um, I would rather do that, as I told you before, than to put it on the screen. Because it's uh, the more we put effort in learning, the more we benefit, inshallah ta'ala. But if you uh, just listen, that's also fine, inshallah. But if you have the book and you have it opened to follow what's mentioned word by word here, uh, he says, وَقَوْلُهُ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمْ لَا تَرْجِعُوا بَعْدِي كُفَّارًا يَضْرِبُ بَعْضُكُمْ رِقَابَ بَعْضٍ And the statement of the Prophet Sallallahu Do not return after me, kuffaran, disbelievers, dullalan, deviants, يَضْرِبُ بَعْضُكُمْ رِقَابَ بَعْضٍ uh, Hating uh, one's uh, necks, one uh, to the other. Uh, first of all, this is uh, basically a hadith that, uh, and what he mentioned afterwards with regards to uh, the, the people of Al Khawarij, those who would uh, claim that someone is a disbeliever because of a sin, or that the major sin takes the person outside the fold of Al Islam. So, uh, mentioning uh, this, uh, this subject here, and uh, that uh, and protecting oneself from the deviant beliefs. So the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ that he said, "Do not return after me, kuffaran dullalan, disbelievers and deviants." Uh, by what? By killing one another. And the riqab here, the necks are mentioned, is when someone hits someone's neck. That means he wants to kill that person. And there's the other hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, the like of this. And he continues, but we were explaining first and then we continue with what he mentioned. Like, سباب المسلم فسوق وقتاله كف Reviling a Muslim is فسوق is a major sin. Uh, and قتاله fighting a Muslim is an act of disbelief. Uh, and what's mentioned before of the hadith of an nifaq and uh, hypocrisy, uh, this is all related because these types of evil, evil actions. I'm not saying to belittle that. It's evil, evil actions. It doesn't take the person by itself outside the fold of Al-Islam. Right? So uh, this is something to be clear. Because the hadith and the ayat of the Quran uh, do not contradict one another. 
right? So, um, and this is one uh, evidence of that, because Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, for example, in Allah la yaghfiru ayushraka bi, wa yaghfiru ma duna dari karima yasha. That Allah Subhanahu wa Taala does not forgive uh, a shirk associating partners with Him, but He forgives anything else other than that. Uh, and there's also other things that, for example, if someone would uh, believe that something that already uh, established without no doubt whatsoever that it's an act of a sin, for example, if someone rejects that, he says uh, it's halal to kill a Muslim, not a specific Muslim that he has some form of a misunderstanding, no denying the fact that it's haram to kill Muslim, a Muslim killing a Muslim, or even a Muslim killing a non-Muslim without the right to do so then uh, it's denying what is known to be in the religion by necessity. Uh, and a person knows that this is also an act of disbelief that takes a person outside the fold of Islam. But the fact that a person would commit major sins, and he mentioned this evidence is here, does not take the person outside the fold of Islam. So in matters of belief, it's we have to be clear on this. And it's not to belittle these actions. And he says, and the like of Wamith, and he mentioned the other hadith, إِذَا الْتَقَى الْمُسْلِمَانِ بِسَيْفَيْهِمَا فَالْقَاتِلُ وَالْمَقْتُلُ وَفِي النَّارِ If two Muslims, they meet, التَقَى المسلمان, two Muslims, بِسَيْفَيْهِمَا with their swords, and it's in the dual tense, with their two swords, each one has a sword, فَالْقَاتِلُ وَالْمَقْتُلُ Then, القاتل, the killer, والمقتول, and the one that is killed, uh, في النار, in the hellfire. And the Prophet ﷺ, when he was asked about that, and he does not mention the rest of the hadith, but the Prophet ﷺ, he was asked, Al-Qatil, we know that he killed a Muslim, so we know that he's in the fire. How about Al-Maqtul? How about the one that is killed? Why is he in the fire? So the Prophet ﷺ answered by saying, إِنَّهُ كَانَ حَرِيصًا عَلَى قَتْلِ صَحِبِهِ That he was so eager to kill his companion or his friend or his brother. So they were fighting with each other. The maqtul, the one that is killed, he was also, as the qatil, as the killer, he was uh, also eager to kill his brother. So that's why both of them are in the hellfire. And that does that mean that he's going to be in the hellfire forever? But it's a major sin, major, major sin, but it doesn't make the person a disbeliever just by, by itself like this. It might lead the person to disbelief. This is something else. But that act by itself does not make him a disbeliever by default like that. Uh, and also like the hadith, as he mentioned the hadith, سِبَابُ الْمُسْلِمِ فُسُوكُ وَقِتَالُ وَكُفْرُ Reviling a Muslim, saying bad words to a Muslim, it's a major sin, sin فُسُوكُ rebelling, rebelling against the commands of Allah. وَقِتَالُ وَكُفْرُ Fighting here. He is not قتل. This is not killing. Fighting him is an act of disbelief. Fighting against a believer is an act of disbelief. Also, and the like of that, he mentioned another hadith of the Prophet عليه الصلاة والسلام من قال لأخيه يا كافر فقد باء بها أحدهما whoever says to his brother oh you kafir oh you disbeliever فقد باء بها أحدهما one of them returned back with this باء means return back that means it rebounds back a word is, is not just a word that does not have any significance to it a word has a ruling has an effect so someone says to another, Oh, you kafir, or oh, you disbeliever. One of them would return back with that word. One of them would be a disbeliever, basically. Either if the one that has been told that he's a disbeliever, he is a disbeliever, so that means he deserved that word. Or if he is not a disbeliever, then it goes back to the one that uttered that word. Then he himself becomes a disbeliever. So this is how dangerous it is for someone to accuse someone of being uh, in the state of disbelief. So uh, we're talking here about rulings, right? So this is the rulings. Uh, as far as, uh, first of all, this is a major sin, but it doesn't take the person outside the fold of Islam, does not make him a disbeliever. But if someone denies something that is well established in the deen of Islam, saying that zina is halal, for example, and he knows what the Quran says about zina, he knows what the, what the Prophet ﷺ said, agreed upon that this is a major sin. And he knows that. And he says, no, it's permissible. Right? This is, an, this is disbelief. Makes a person a disbeliever. So, but who is the one to apply these rulings upon an individual? This is, has to be by a judge, by a person of knowledge, 
right? And because there's implications to this, not to the individuals, because a person might have said that when he's crazy, when he's out of his mind or any other things. Anyway, so the evidence has to be established upon such a person. And he says, وَمِثْلْ كَفَرَ بِاللَّهِ كُفْرٌ بِاللَّهِ تَبَرُّؤٌ مِنْ نَسَبٍ وَإِنْدَقٍ He quotes the hadith also of the Prophet ﷺ that it's kufrun billah. It's disbelief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. تَبَرُّؤ مِنْ نَسَبٍ to, um, to disloyal oneself, to distant oneself from lineage. وَإِنْدَقٍ Even if it's something very small or minute or not major thing. Uh, and also, like the continuation of, of this hadith, or to claim that a person has lineage that is not known. So when someone referred to a lineage that it's not his, when someone would uh, deny a lineage that his lineage, this is an act of disbelief, right? And, and uh, it shows the importance of, uh, re, you know, attributing everyone to their parents and things like this. Lineage in Islam is, is such an important thing there are rules that applies as a result of that inheritance, other things, and so on. So this is an act of disbelief. And he says, وَنَحْوُ هَذِهِ الْأَحَدِيثِ So mention some of these examples of the hadith, the word kufr, or he's a disbeliever, or this or that. And then he says, and then I want you to pay attention to this because it's a, it's a very important matter here, what is meant by that. He says, وَنَحْوُ هَذِهِ الْأَحَدِيثِ مِمَّا قَدْ صَحَّ وَحُفِظُ and the like of these hadith where it's authentic and it's been memorized, it's been protected in the deen, it's known. فَإِنَّا نُسَلِّمُ لَهُ فَإِنَّا نُسَلِّمُ لَهُ We submit ourselves to these hadith. وَإِنْ لَمْ نَعْلَمْ تَفْسِيرَهَا وَلَا نَتَكَلَّمُ فِيهَا وَلَا نُجَادِلُ فِيهَا And he says, even though we do not know the tafsir of it, and we don't speak about these hadith, and we don't uh, argue with these hadith, that means the hadith as mentioned here, right? And we don't know the, the, what happened to the person when he does this in his heart, right? This is not something that we would speak about. And we don't dispute in these matters, of course. Everything is as the Prophet ﷺ, he said. Uh, and the ahkam, the rulings of this dunya, right? Uh, how to deal with a person that uh, did any of these actions, right? Because there are rulings that applies in this life. That is to be done by the people of authority. So they would bring such a person and they would uh, clarify what he mentioned or what he did or what he said. And they would determine whether he left the fold of Islam or not. But it's not for the individuals to make rulings on individuals or on other individuals based on that. Warning, yes. Uh, stating, yes. You know, things like this. وَلَا نُفَسِّرُ هَذِي الْحَدِيثِ إِلَّا مَا جَاءَتْ we do not uh, describe or explain these hadith except with what is being mentioned. Uh, we do not reject it except with what's, except with what's uh, more authentic or what's more correct. And it shows that how the, 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 the people of Ahl Sunnah, they humble themselves to the, to the Nusus and they don't reject any of it. And they explain it in the light of the other nusus in the light of other uh, acts of, uh, you know, authentic evidences from the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. And there's no contradiction whatsoever of these matters. So, uh, again, the action by itself, this is with regards to a hadith, al-wa'id. To take it, the, the reason why he mentioned this is to take it on its apparent meaning like this. Why? Because when we try to explain it or to uh, water it down and if it's correct to say see what I said now is that it you know, does not take the person outside the fold of Islam what happens to people when they hear these hadith some people might think they would say well it's not a disbelief you, you, it's, it's, not a, it's only a major sin so let me do these actions you know some people if they you know they are so much in rage for example they want, someone wants to kill someone else if he knows that this will take him outside the fold of Islam, he won't do it, for example. But if he knows that it's only a major sin, so he will say, let me just do it and get my anger, you know, and alhamdulillah, I can repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There are so many different major sins. So that's what is meant here. Leave it the way it is. Leave it the way it is. This hadith. That means a person, it's, a, it's an act of kufr. It's an act of disbelief. So that the effect of it will be as mentioned in the hadith. 
Uh, but as far as your action or your hukm in this world to call a person a kafir, this is what is warned. We warned against this. So it's basically, and I want you to pay attention to this meaning. What is meant by this is not the doer of these actions. What we talk about that he's not a kafir and so on. It's the other ones. It's those who did not commit this act so that we don't believe or so that we don't make a ruling uh, upon someone that he's a disbeliever or so, to stay away from this. But as far as, does that make a person a disbeliever or not, to leave it the way it is like this? right? Because it's, it, it can either lead him, lead him to this, or he might be in his heart that he thinks that this is permissible, which is an act of disbelief. But we, we do not say that he became a disbeliever and he went outside the fold of Islam by this sin. We say his action is an act of disbelief, but as far as that in particular specific person, we don't call him a disbeliever. So we have to differentiate between the action and between the doer of the action. So the action can be an act of disbelief or an act of hypocrisy. And it does not become by necessity that everyone that do an act of disbelief is a disbeliever. Not everyone that do an act of hypocrisy, he's a hypocrite. He's a hypocrite, right? So their affairs is to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We encourage them to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We encourage them to uh, uh, you know, repent from the sin. But we, this is how things are. We say this is an act of disbelief. But does that make a person a disbeliever? No. And as we said, why? Because a person might be ignorant. A person might be at a moment that he lost his mind. Allah knows best. You know? so, uh, so these things has to be, we stay with. Plus, there's no benefit from, for us to do it. And to leave it to the people of knowledge or to the people of authority or so. So this is what is meant by these uh, statements. And it's uh, the very important also aspect of it to leave it the way it is, these hadith, so that the effect of a zajr or the effect of uh, scolding someone or warning someone from these types of evil actions is to stay like that with its and to exalt the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, and to be away from. Uh, uh, at the same time, the holo or the extremism in calling people uh, disbeliever and things like this. Barakallah fikum. We'll uh, continue, inshallah, ta'ala next time. And uh, we have the next class in a few minutes, inshallah. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barakallahu wa sallam 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 wa sall